let me say first that the steel ties you see in these few photos are not the Carnegie steel ties. It is highly unlikely that there are any of the original Carnegie steel ties still in service. The steel ties we see here are authentic and are in an actual railroad. I have never seen this type of tie. So this leads me to believe that there are many of you that have never seen a steel tie before either. As seen from my depiction of the Bure beam, he allowed nearly twice the width of the upper section of the beam for the base, which would give solid, stable support. A section of his original beam weighed 20 pounds per linear foot. According to Railway Age Gazette, dated October 18, 1912, there are over 1.5 million of these railroad ties in use, of which 850,000 are in the Bessemer and Lake Erie Railroad system. Should you have access to a book by Roy C. Beaver titled The Bessemer and Lake Erie Railroad, 1869 to 1969, there is a far better depiction of the Bure Beam in that book. The first I-beams, or later as they were referred to as the Carnegie Steel Ties, were placed in a track in the Bessemer and Lake Erie line near Claytonia in December of 1904. From 1905 to 1919, there were over one million Carnegie steel ties in service in the Bessemer and Lake Erie line. With the outbreak of World War I, President Woodrow Wilson announced the nationalization of a large majority of the railroads in the United States under the Federal Possession and Control Act. The Bessemer in Lake Erie was one of those controlled by the U.S. government. This occurred in late December of 1917 and lasted to March of 1920. When private ownership was returned to the railroads, the Carnegie Steel Tie 
was already on the decline. And again, though these are not authentic burr beams or the Carnegie steel ties, they are a representation of a steel railroad tie versus a wooden tie. The design here is completely different than the original Burr Carnegie steel ties. This is a totally different design as you can see. The idea here looking at this rail line is to visualize what a steel tie would have looked like in the early days. This particular design is currently being manufactured and is in use. Each of these rail support beams have a stainless steel strip welded to the steel beam. There's an identification number for, for, for future reference as you could clearly see. The ends of this particular design were bent down and folded under. The company producing this particular design of rail support system is Narst Co. And the company is listed on the internet. Further down this line is the bridge that crosses the Kiskaminicus River. It's located at the confluence of the Kiski River and the Allegheny River.
A number of years ago, there was a small operation named the Kiski Junction Railroad. This was a short passenger tour excursion. Now, I'm not sure how long this particular business was in operation, but the remnants, as you can see, are here, and I'm sure there is no trespassing permitted. I do remember taking a ride on this line many, many years ago. Kiskey Junction Railroad, the steel railroad ties, and the bridge, the railroad bridge over the Kiskey River can be located in Shenley. If you're driving on Route 56 anywhere near West Leechburg, look for this sign.